Now, gone are the days where you would expect schools to teach, well, poetry or uh, basic literature or numeracy skills. Now, our schools are forced to subscribe to a national curriculum which is controlled by progressive, i.e. leftist, regressive ideologues. Lesson plans are filling the minds of kids with uh, radical theories about race and gender. They are doubling down on climate fear-mongering, so much so that many children now suffer from eco-anxiety, self-inflicted or inflicted by the schools. The IPA, and I urge you, go to the ipa.org.au and subscribe because they do amazing work. The IPA's latest report on the national curriculum paints a very bleak picture of the teaching being unleashed in Australian classrooms. Joining us now is uh, spectator author and fellow at the Institute of Public Affairs, Bella Debrera. Bella, great to see you as always. Welcome back to Outsiders. You've got a terrific piece in The Spectator Australia where you expose what is really going on with the national curriculum. I mean, it's neo-Marxism on steroids. Take us through, I guess, the worst aspects of it. <laughs> where, do, where do I begin? Yeah. Um, look, when I was writing this report, I thought, I thought it was going to be... I thought the education system was slightly better than, than, than I discovered after having gone through thousands and thousands of pages of the national curriculum. I mean, this is why parents don't have time to do it. Yeah. Um, they're very clever. They, you know, they fill these, these lesson plans and they fill the learning, learning areas with just blurb. So there's just no way you can tell what, what's being taught. But if you, if you, if you look at it very carefully, the, the major things that are going on are that they are being taught a false history of Australia, a mm. false Australian history, completely. So they're getting the Bruce Pascoe version of, no. you know, the forget the hunter and gatherer, gatherer sort of history that we know to be true. No, instead they were, you know, building agri... Uh, they, were, they were farmers and they were astrologers and they were scientists and they discovered, they discovered everything before Western civilization had even twigged. So they're getting that false version of Australian history. They're also being taught from a very early age. So in year two, they're being in introduced the, to the idea that, of an invasion. But only two years later are they told about the first fleet. Mm. So, so, so they're, they're, oh. they're being told very early on that Australia was, is illegit illegitimate, that it was invaded. Um, the, 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 the more you go through the, the schooling, the, more, the worse it gets. So by the time they get to year 10, it's you know, full-on genocide and um, stolen generations and um, dispossession and, and <sighs> disease. So they get the, the bad history, they get the wrong history, and they're getting all the climate change stuff which comes through this terrible cross-curriculum priority, which is sustainability. And that is just literally radical green, gender, uh, radical green sort of cultish environmental determinism. Western civilization is failing because we're not recycling our straws. Um, <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and what they're producing are sort of insufferable mini eco-warriors who are going to be going through their parents' recycling bins. That's basically the type of citizen... So just tell the sustainability coming. across all the different courses. So just tell particularly parents and grandparents who are watching with horror how this works. So when the curriculum was first written in 2011, they came up with three cross-curriculum priorities. And they called them priorities because they wanted to prioritise those things over, over everything else which is why no one can read or write, because <laughs> that's that not a priority. A priority. That's no, not a priority. Not. It wasn't literacy and numeracy as a priority. So the, the, the problematic one at the moment is sustainability. And this is like the Trojan horse for this, um, for this green cult that I no. referred to earlier. So it's not really... It sounds all very well. It's, you know, it's how do you look after the environment? It's not, it's, it, it sounds good, but when you really drill down, it's... It's no exaggeration to say that it's on the verge of Gaia worship. It's a pagan idea that, that it's, it's this Mother Earth idea that everything we do has, has, has influences how happy we're keeping Mother Earth. <laughs> so there's this obsession with um, single-use plastics. And, and prep, prep children are, are already told to compost. Um, and when they're in, in, in foundation, they're, they're rapping about climate change and sustainability. And like, it is drummed into them from the very first moment. And the problem with these, this priority is that it's in every subject. So there's not a lesson called sustainability. So mm. foundation arts, mm. science, geography, mathematics, um, English, PE, um, uh, uh, every subject, every learning area has this priority embedded into, deeply into the subject. 
Okay. But also, you've got sustainability, but you've also got that indigenous aboriginal mm -hmm. strand as another cross-curricular priority. So tell us, how does that wind up, you know, in, say, an English class or a history? We don't call it a history anymore because it has that horrible pronoun, his, in it. But, <laughs> um, uh, but you know, studies of the past and uh, even maths and science, I've heard reports that, you know, they do things like look at indigenous science, which seems to be odd because there's only one science that's just simply science not qualified by race. Well, it ends up in everything just like sustainability ends up in everything because it's one of the priorities. So again, there's no subject that you can look at that doesn't, that doesn't give you some information about, they call them First Nations Australians and they can't call them Aborigines. It's in a Canadian country. term. Because that's yes. a language that's verboten now. So that's, um, so, you know, for example, um, in year one, they're learning um, how to do a welcome to country. The house, yeah. They're learning oh, how to do an okay. acknowledgement to country. So forget the national, oh. forget the national anthem. <laughs> this is this is much more important. Uh, so, um, and in PE, in physical education, one of the defining um, sort of ideas behind PE is the idea that of uh, systemic racism. So in PE, children are taught how to spot systemic racism and taught how to develop strategies against systemic how, racism. How does staying yeah. fit? Australians. We used to jump over, I don't know, things and run yeah, around. Play rounders <laughs> when yeah. I was at school yeah, and table. Uh, Swing what, on the monkey uh, bars. Uh, Sorry, Rita. Yeah. Uh, well, this anti-Australia, anti-Western civilization dogma, it sounds like from what you're saying, we are having a version of, I don't know, Bruce Pascoe, Lydia Thorpe, Extinction Rebellion uh, ideology presented as fact to, to impressionable children. Yes, it's all, it's all presented as fact. I mean, climate change is presented as just undeniable. And catastrophic. And catastrophic. <laughs> but then they're told that they actually have to fix it, which is why there's a huge, there's a huge amount of activism in the... I haven't even talked about that yet. I've got pages and pages of examples where they're being taught they have to go out and have to be activists. And again, that's in every single subject. Um, the one useful um, example I did find was in French where they're taught how to protest, which I think, given what's happening in France at the moment, and given <laughs> the French proclivity to protest, it's actually quite useful how to know that. <laughs> but everything else is a, complete, is a complete waste of time. So, as I said, they're going to finish school as, as climate change warriors, social justice warriors, mini, um, mini activists. They'll know how to march in the street. They'll know how to put a poster together. But they know, won't necessarily know how to spell, <laughs> spell or, or, or read or write. I mean, it's just, it's just disastrous. But, 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 and, and that's a, a great key insight you have in your Spectator Australia article, which is that they're presented with all these problems, but they are not given the tools with which they could mm. possibly ever hope to realistically address those problems. Uh, so they're not taught critical thinking. I was speaking to a teacher the other day up in Newcastle who, who says he desperately wants to teach his kids critical thinking, to think for themselves rather than what to think. And this seems to be the problem with the national curriculum. It's all about you must think this about X, Y and Z, political, hardcore leftist things, and no actual tools with which to develop your own thinking and reasoning. No, I mean, they're so far away from the Socratic method. I mean, there's, they, they wouldn't... They, they, and the funny thing is, you know, they, they do talk about critical thinking in the national curriculum yeah, all lot. the time, and it's absolutely not happening. They've got... They have one version of everything they want, have one narrative of Australian history, they have one one narrative about the climate. They mention renewables twice, but... They, sorry, they mention new renewables the whole way through, but they mention nuclear power once, and that's in the context of, you can imagine, nuclear disasters. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yes, it's, it's, um, it's no exaggeration to say that this, this, this national curriculum is a disaster for Australia as a country, because what kind of citizens are we producing? Well, Dumb ones who hate it. Australia is and, what yes, <laughs> we're exactly. producing. And who go out and uh, man the barricades. Fantastic. Belly Debrera, always great to have you here on Outsiders. Terrific work there in The Spectator Australia. Keep up the great work at the IPA, wonderful organisation. And thank you for keeping an eye on the national curriculum. Unfortunately, so the rest of us don't have to, but so many parents <laughs> and grandparents out there will be thanking you for doing this invaluable work.